Well, Reuben, the oldest brother, said, no, we can't kill him. We can't have that blood on our hand. We got to do something with him. Let's just throw him in a hole. And the whole while Reuben was telling his brothers this, he was plotting to come back later to rescue his brother, uh, Joseph, so he wouldn't be killed. But the Bible said, here come the Midianites of the Ishmaelite tribe. Ishmaelites of the Midianite tribe. Here they come, and they was taking precious cargo from where they were down to Egypt. And one of the brothers said, look, we can get rid of Joseph and make some money too. You know, there's some plotting folks today. Come on, somebody. Always scheming because they're under the remote control. Always plotting because they're under the self-control. But when you ask them to live under the spirit control, they don't even want to show up Bible study. They don't want to show up at Sunday school. Oh, see, y'all don't want to say amen. Because you're still in the self-control. I ain't going. I don't care what kind of Bible class they have. I got to see my favorite program, Basic Black. Ain't nothing on TV more important than Bible study. Amen. And we ain't out for two nights out of the week or two days out of the week, Thursday and Sunday. Amen. Amen. Ain't no real pressure put on nobody. I don't call nobody up and say, how come you won't have Bible study? Maybe I should. I heard a pin drop. Ain't nobody say amen. You know why? Because of that remote control got you control. That self control got you control. But if you're under the spirit of God, sometimes the spirit moves you to tell you to go and do something. And when you don't go and do something, you don't get the blessing God got for you. Amen. Oh, y'all don't like this back and forth. You know, you always do that. That's because that's who I am. This Joseph that was stolen in the hole by his brothers, taken out of the hole, sold to the, uh, the Ishmaelites into Egypt. And you know the whole story. They went on down. Everything Joseph did was blessed by God because he feared God. He wasn't under remote control. He wasn't under self-control. He was under spirit control. And when you're under the spirit control and you obey God, what God tells you to do, God's going to bless everything your hands touch. Everywhere you go, you're going to be a blessing to somebody. When you show up, just your presence is going to be a blessing. Sometimes when you speak word, they're going to bless somebody else. But there will be those who will despise your guts. I mean, if they can trip you up and mess you up and send you away and get rid of you and hurt your feelings and roll their eyes and suck their teeth and lie to you and deceive you, did I, did I cover it all? Oh, come on, somebody. There are people that will mess you up. Because they can't stand the way you look. Don't let no devil trick you into coming to church on Sunday morning. He'll tell you everything. Don't go because that same old preacher, that Reverend Watkins is something else. He mad with me and I'm mad with him and the feeling is mutual. The Bible said Joseph was sold into Egypt. He didn't know. Imagine, 17 years old, didn't know the outcome of your life. He'd been knocked down and beat up and scuffed up. Nose been bloody. Come on, somebody. Thank God I never had to fight none of my brothers. But Lord, sweet blood of Jesus, there's been a couple of them. Oh, boy, I'm telling you right now. A couple of them I could have knocked out. I'm telling you. That's my brother. It took the spirit, boy, I'm telling you. Not self-control, not remote control, but the spirit control Amen. that keep me from knocking him out. Amen. Go get an attitude with me and tell me it's none of my business. Well, I'm telling you, I start walking like a caged lion. I was like, I start talking under my breath. Come on, somebody. Then I left talking under my breath to talking to the spirit. Then I, I was able to come back to myself. That's how you know you got some spirit. When you start talking to yourself, amen. And then the spirit said, what's that you say? And you say, oh, 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 I'm sorry. You know, I like to hurt him. Come on, somebody. Okay, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Joseph went on down to Egypt in bondage. Y'all know the story. Got down to part of his house because part of need a servant to run his household. Now, 
Though he was doing what God called him to do and wasn't fully aware of all that was happening, there was a part of his wife. Y'all don't look at me like that. Because, see, when a man go after little children, boys or girls, he's a pedophile. Is that right? But when a woman go after little children, uh, a little younger man, she's called a cougar. A cougar. Don't y'all look at me like that. Don't. In other words, part of his wife, when she saw Joseph and wanted him, she wants some young blood. She wants some young meat. Amen? Part of her won't throw him down no more. Let's be real with it. Oh, come on. If you read the story, you find out every day she was talking and putting on him to try to get him to lay down with her, but he refused because he said, it's a sin for a man to lay down with another man's wife. You gotta know where you stand with the Lord. If you line up with this one and line up with that one, it's a sin in the eyesight of God. See, y'all didn't think I know what I was talking about. You got to know at 57 years of age this year, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Yeah. After 35 years of marriage, I do know a little bit of something. Yeah. But don't look at me like I got another head growing out the side of my neck. Because I know exactly what I'm talking about. She turned into a cougar because she wanted to be with him. He refused to be with her. Day in and day out. She plotting and scheming. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Oh, y'all waiting for me to tell you? Uh-huh. I figure that next time. When a woman is after a man, and a man is under self-control or remote control, she going to debunk that control. Come on, somebody. While men will learn about Snip snails and puppy dog tails. Women will learn about sugar and spice and Oh come on somebody. And they know. Come on somebody. God has blessed them to be any the creatures they are, amen? And they're lovely creatures. But what you give them is what you're gonna get back. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to preach a whole sermon on that. Because some of y'all are like, what is he talking about now? I'm talking about Joseph trying to get away from part of his wife. This man had a hard time. He said, look, part of her didn't keep nothing back from me except for you. Why would I be sneaking behind his back, laying up with his wife, when I could be doing God's business and can stay out of trouble? When you're under spirit control, you don't have to never worry about sneaking around. That was a half amen and half. What's that you say? I don't want to hear nothing about what happened in Vegas. Stay in Vegas. Because the angels already got it written down, where you've been and what you've been up to. And I don't care if that man come and see you once a year or once a month. I don't care if you're sneaking around once a year or once a month. Come on, somebody. Amen. You need to cut off sin by righteousness. Amen. Amen. You no, know, young women, don't be fooled by these men sweet-talking you, talking about let me sample it first. I don't know if I want to marry you until I sample something. You don't need to sample nothing. You get what you get when you get it, and when it's time for you to have it, you can have it, but until then, you don't get nothing. I better go on the end this sermon. It's getting y'all look like y'all enjoying y'all self. Maybe by, by him being in that tornado, he must have did something to his mind. He's spinning like that tornado. Come on, son. I know what I'm talking about. The only reason why Joseph didn't go and jump in, in the sack or jump in the bed with part of his wife because he was under the spirit control. And so since she figured, well, that rascal, he's smart. 
See, the devil's always cunning. If you think you're smarter than him, don't be deceived. He's got over 6,000 years of deceitfulness. And when you think you, oh, I'm slick, I won't try but a little bit. That little bit, it will cause you to get in all kind of trouble. And one day when Joseph came in, the Bible says she grabbed him by his coat. Not the coat of many colors because his brother cut that up and threw goat blood on it, took it back to Joseph and told Joseph, his father, your son got killed by a wild animal. I'm here to tell you the devil is alive. My sons and daughters not dead, but they're alive. And I don't put a curse on them. I put blessing on them. I don't tell them to leave God. I tell them to come to God. I tell them they're bought by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the anointing of God. I claim their souls right here and right now. And Joseph was probably taking care of his family business, taking care of part of his house. He probably was a good-looking man. Walking through dignified. Come on, somebody. Yeah. See, today, these day, people are so deceitful. They ain't just after some, some man going to church. They asked to the pastor. Come on, somebody. Don't y'all look at me. I know where I'm going with this. They, 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 the brother's all right. But I'm going to see what kind of power the pastor got. And the pastor's under the remote control. And he's under self-control. He's already under control. He needs to be under the spirit control. And when he spies something that ain't right, somebody and say remote control, self-control, spirit control. Joseph went out doing his business and one day part of his wife got him by the coat and he tried to get away. I mean he was trying to get away. I can only see it in the spirit realm. Lord have mercy. Come on, Joseph, you can break loose. Come on, Joseph, don't let the devil hold you down. Come on, yank out of that. Break loose, spin around. Forget that coat, get another coat. I mean, Joseph, come out of that coat like Richmond came out of Virginia. You see, she couldn't stay in the fact she couldn't have it. So she's turned conniving and scheming. Her husband was the big time captain of the guards. And anything he, she told him, he probably believed it. Now I have a different theory. Every man ought to know his wife. He ought to know if she on the up and up. Or is she playing on the down low. Well, you have to say amen. I know what I'm talking about. You ain't got to play no game, but if she's looking at every man that passed by, and you catch it, don't say nothing about it, next thing you know, it's going to be a big mess. And I'm sure Potiphar was worried about whether his wife was telling the truth or lying. 